uh, lecture. See if you can conclude chapter five today. Um, I've just uh, upload chapter six tutorial inside the Teams, uh, just in case. OK. <clears throat> now we have completed the production uh, quantity model and basic model. Now we look at quantity discount. There's one type of order that is fall under this category, quantity discount order. So what I mean by discount, uh, quantity discount? It means that the more you purchase, the more privilege of discount that people can give you. All right. So for example, if you purchase, if you place order 1000 unit, it costs you normal price. For example, you place 1,000, 10 ringgit per piece. But if you place 10,000, it maybe give you 20% discount. It costs you uh, so and so. And then you place further, you discuss further. So you, you manage to save more costs as you increase further. However, you need to, when you do a discount rate order, you need to consider the inventory that you have. Huh? Don't you order, then the order come to your factory, already, no place to put. Uh, then you put outside, uh, then people complain, or even because of bad weather or warm or warm weather, the order that you place outside, uh, it destroyed or it become bad or you cannot use any. Okay? So, there's a there's a discount there. Huh? There's a discount there. So let's say um, you have some a scenario huh, where you have a firm that produce a mark with a logo, right? Now today you have a loss of this kind of company. Uh, every time there's an annual dinner or there's a celebration, there's a company purposely do. Uh, they they have a business helping you print your logo or your wishes, custom made your wishes on the on a mark or pen and so on. Eh? So under quantity discount, you have this kind of scenario. For example, $5 per mark if you purchase 100 and you purchase more and more, the price will go down. Right? Three, uh, $3 if you purchase 500 or more. Okay, So this one will happen in the real life. If you go out there, it's your bargain power. Huh? You buy more, you have more bargain power, uh, but you need to be careful on your capital and also your inventory, uh, the space that you have. Mark you can you can put anywhere, uh, but what happens if you order something that is sensitive to weather or sensitive to a specific uh, environment? For example, COVID COVID nineteen vaccine, right? Uh, each country they have this uh, special rate discount one quantity. So the more they order from uh, Pfizer or other brand, they have this special rate on. Okay. However, each country they are limited by the capacity to store the vaccine because the vaccine need to store under a certain temperature. So if you don't have the facilities, even though you buy a lot, but when the vaccine come, you don't have facilities, the vaccine going to, to be ineffective. So no use also. Huh? So you need to consider. So, and one formula, uh, the, the, the first equation after the break, right? Uh, for today, this is the fifth one. To calculate total inventory costs for under tot quantity discount scenario, first two same, but the, you add in one more component, which is the P and D. What is P and D? P is price per unit item. D is your annual demand. Okay, price you purchase multiplied by annual demand, you get the cost for your orders. Huh? So under total inventory cost for quantity discount scenario, you have two order costs um, carrying costs, order cost, carrying costs, but plus one more. When you have a 
privilege to enjoy discount rate for your orders. Huh? So this one is to determine the optimum order size with the quantity discount. Whether uh, you order more, you save more cost, or you order more, you need to pay more. So this equation is to find the optimum total cost huh? or the total cost for the inventory um, under discount discount rate scenario. Okay, copy this equation. This is for under the uh, quantity discount uh, section. Total inventory cost equal order component plus carrying component plus discount component. Okay. This one is a discount component. Huh? Okay. So when we look at the discount and with a constant carrying cost uh, constraint, so if a given a uh, scenario, we are doing the EOQ cost model, the basic, uh, the basic cost model calculation, and you're given a discount chart here. Right? So if you you have two discount here, you have two discount uh, here, illustrate following. So order size. If you order from zero to ninety-nine unit they will sell you at $10. If you order more than 99, sorry, uh, this one is uh, more than 99 means 100 to 119. Uh, typo error here, just uh, in your notes there, in your notes there, later in your notes. Uh, we will still use this as a calculation. So um, there's a typo error here, 100 to 199, not 99, uh, 199. Your price is going to calculate eight dollar multiplied by the discount, and then more than two hundred, more than two hundred, you have one more price. Okay, more than two hundred, huh? Two hundred and more, you're going to six dollar uh, discount. Two. Okay, so uh, I think this one is not multiplied. It means that you have a discount price eight dollar and six dollar. It means that this is discount rate one. This is discount rate two. It's not the multiplication. Huh? It means that eight dollar is discount rate one. Uh, six dollar is discount rate two. It's not a multiplication. Huh? Just take note on that. It's just a just a just a remark for what is the meaning of this price. We have two discount rate here. One is eight dollar, six dollar. So you're given a, a chart here. I think you have this chart also on your tutorial handouts. So what is this chart give you? Inventory cost dollar. Inventory cost, meaning how much it costs per, per, per order. Then you have the quantity, all right? Have the quantity. Inventory cost versus quantity. You know that when you calculate TC, right? Before this, before this, you don't have the upper one. Before this, you have this line, carrying costs and ordering costs. You still remember before this 5.6 in basic and also in production model, you are looking at these two components, ordering costs and also carrying costs. And where you find optimum, when they meet together at the center, where your ordering cost equal to carrying cost, where this one you find the Q-op, where you derive the Q-op equation, Q-op equal to square root something, uh, that one. You use the concept of op ordering cost equal to carrying cost, meeting at this point. You project down, you get your quantity of your optimum quantity here. Okay. Now today, uh, after the break session, this one is what we learned today. Huh? So how to read this graph? You have three line here, 
three curve line. What you learned previously, what you learned previously is without the discount, right? So from zero to 99, one fixed price. What you learned in previously basic EOD, you have two line and then there's one curve, right? You still remember? There's one curve that you found the optimum uh, total cost, the minimum total cost. It is this, this line. The line that you see in the previous section, ordering cost, carrying cost, and one curve that you combine all the number is this line. Okay, this dot line, it tell you what you learned before this in the basic EOQ model. You get this line. As you increase the carrying cost and you reduce the ordering cost, you have this curve. Huh? So on your graph, you see total cost $10. So this is the basic EOQ model. Okay. Now another one. Huh? Another one, seeing this one, we are, we are talking about giving discount if you increase your order cost. Uh, sorry, order size. Huh? This is 100 to 199. Yeah? Cost you at $8. The total cost will reduce, correct? Because the price tag, the price tax already in, reduced already. The price tax you need to pay before discount is $10 or 10 ringgit. But now you have a discount rate. As you increase your carrying cost and the reducing your ordering cost, the graph is not going to go up upper than your total cost. Your cost is going to reduce, right? It's a logic, right? This is without, without discount. You get this line. After discount, you save $2 for, for each purchase. Your total cost going to below this line, right? Logic, right? This is the first discount. And if you get a further discount, which is six dollar, if your order is more than two hundred and above, you you can purchase at six dollar. So if in the beginning you already start with two hundred, your total cost going to further lower than without discount one. So you have three dash line here. So three dash line, you have before discount. After discount one, after discount two, you have three dash line there. Before you do analysis, make sure you understand what is the line means. Huh? Why there's a three line there? How you get the three line? You already learned this first line in the basic EOQ model already. This line actually is combining this line and this line. Then you get a parabolic shape like this. A quadratic curve. Then it reduces the total cost because of the discount, reduce further because of the discount. Then we will look at the solid line later. Okay, don't worry about the solid line. Okay, now I'm going to explain the solid line. Eh? There is a cut-off line here. There's a cut-off quantity here. For example, 100. Because after 100, there is a drop of price. From 99, you add one more order, the price is going to drop from 10 ringgit to from $10 to $8. Correct? So your cost will start from without discount line here, solid line. This is your total cost without discount. Until it reaches to one scenario, if the order more than 100, the total cost going to instantly reduce and follow the second curve. Do you agree? This, sol this solid line is just tell you what happened if you reach 100. If you order 100, you have two choice. Not, not two choice, uh, but your quotation is going to drop from 10 ringgit or $10 drop to $8 per order suddenly drop, there's a drop from 99 and then 100 going to drop. There's a choice there. There's a choice there because if you order 100, there are two options. 
either the seller can sell you at $10 or $8, but most probably you will bargain for lower price. Uh, you, are, you, are, you are more willing to pay at $8 at 100 order, right? So how to get this straight line is to find the boundaries of the discount. So here you project down your quantity for discount one is 100. That's why there's a dash line of 100 over here to represent there's a boundary of dropping of your total cost. Another dropping cost is when, and then you follow, as you buy from 100 until 199. You buy from 100, 199 over here, 200, there's a certain drop of the price. After 199, if you order 200 and above, the price drop from $8 to $6. So 100, you follow this curve, no longer use this curve. Huh? After your order reach 100 and above, you no longer use this curve, but you follow the second curve because you are in within the range of first discount rate here. Until we reach 199, what happened to the price drop to $6? Certain drop, what is the boundaries numbers? 200. So QD2 is 200. You draw a straight line, continue with your order from 200 and so on. You follow the third curve. Okay, try to have an understanding of the solid line, dash line, and discount rate table here. Okay, you should know how to do this one, convert this table into this graph. Yeah, you have two tests, right? Uh, one more test is coming. You should know how to convert this one into this kind of graph. Huh? Any question before we move forward? Steven, you okay? No, sir. Steven, okay? Eh? Steven, you okay? Just now I heard you say no, is it? You know, okay. Steven, any question you want to ask me? Who is Steven, sir? Steven, Steven. Steven sir? Hey, this one. It's Steven, sir. Sorry, yeah, wait. Uh. Uh, sorry, Steven is in uh, my another class. Uh, not Steven. <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay, Ruben, you okay? Eh? Ruben okay, and Guza, okay. I apologize. I mix up with the student names. Okay. Next, we move to... Um, yeah, the rest is... If you understand the graph, the rest is... You can read from my slides. Lah, huh? Okay. The rest you read from my slides. Huh? I already explained what is all these lines. Let's look at example number four. Okay, look at your tutorial question. You have all the information there. So you see a discount table there, okay? So discount table, uh, you look at the table, there is a normal price from one to 49, you pay $1,400. Break boundaries, 50. 50 until 89, you pay 1,100. And more than 90, if you pay more discount, you pay 900. So you read the information, the rest is just the same. Only you need, when you read this table, bear in mind that you recall the graph that we go through just now. Huh? The graph with a few lines, huh? the axis and all this, bear in mind. Huh? So start from this table, I want, I, I, I want you to imagine using this table and the idea that you learned just now, are you able to convert this table to plot the graph like what we covered just now. Are you able to draw inventory cost versus quantity? These two remain same, these two red lines remain same. Are you able to identify where is Q op? Where is the Q for discount one with the Q for discount two? 
Are you able to plot the three dash line here? Original price, discount one, discount two. Are you able to draw the solid line? The boundaries drop again, boundary drop again, and so on. Okay. Oh yeah, before I go into the example, uh, as you can see from these slides, right? When you calculate for the Q-op, when you calculate for a Q-op, you are using, you have to imagine where is the position of Q op. Huh? For example, your Q op is here when you're using the discount rate of first one. Huh? Your Q op will be here and not will be and not here. Huh? Because the first line here, the first line here is without discount. The quantity will still same. Huh? The Q op or another case, huh? the the Q op point will be always the same for TC TC TC. Huh? three discount rate Q op will always same. The quantity will also same. Huh? The lowest point will always give you the Q op. You have to share the same Q op. Of course, the cost will be different. Huh? Okay. And the uh, total minimum cost in the scenario just now will be at here. This will be the minimum total cost that you can save if you go for 200 and more. This point will give you minimum total cost. Okay, if you project to the left, this point will give you minimum total cost. to this example uh, if you read you're almost the same only the value is changing annual carrying cost for store for a tv it costs you 190 meaning you put these uh, devices into a warehouse so the warehouse charge you per tv uh, 190 per tv if you park there right carrying cost you can imagine as a parking cost uh, ordering cost is 2050 dollar if you need to top up huh? if you need to top up it will cost you two thousand fifty dollar annual demand is given 200 unit annual demand which is capital d annual demand capital d chain the chain want to determine if you should take advantages of the discount for the to order the basic eoq order size Okay, let's do analysis. So copy, uh, pull out the information we need. We need CO ordering cost, 2,500 from the question. You have another one, 190. This is your carrying cost with your C sub C, 190 per TV. This is per TV. Yeah? And annual. Annual demand, capital D, 200 TV per year. So we do calculation using the model that we learned. Q op, we're using the E, the basic one. Huh? This is for the basic one. Basic EO, uh, basic model. Okay, basic model because it, use, it asks you to use basic EOQ or the size, right? It asks you to determine using number whether you want to follow the discount rate or you follow the basic EOQ models. This Q op is found in the basic EOQ model. Q op equal to square root 2 C sub O D divided by your carrying cost. You can substitute value, right? This one over here, this one over here, D is here. So after you calculate the Q op, okay, substitution, huh? you get 72.5 TV. This is the Q optimum quantity for your purchase scenario or order scenario. Okay, huh? so yes, me, sir. yeah, go ahead. So this Q op uh, calculation don't have one minus DP, is it? Uh, do you know why? Do you know why? Uh, 
The question asks you to use what? EOQ or this is. Uh, it asks you to use basic EOQ. The one that with one minus something that would fall under what model? Production model. We have two, we have two model. Okay, the one that you just learned before the break is fall under production order, uh, production model. But the one that you learned before today is basic EOQ. This is fall under basic EOQ chapter or section. That's why it's without the one minus something here. Do you clear? Yes? Yes, sir. All right. So you do, uh, okay. So again, uh, the Q op here is 72.5 TV. So you know that realistic, there's no half TV there. There's no half TV that you can purchase. Nobody going to sell you half TV. So you need to round up to 73, realistically. Huh? Because this is not liquid, it's not uh, drinks, or it's not, it's not a powder, it's not, it's not in kilogram that you can just cut off like that. Right. TV, there's no half TV. Huh? There's no 0.5 TV. 0.5 TV doesn't work. Uh, nobody want to purchase one. Okay, so you can round up to 73 TV huh? in your calculation. So I put, but in our in our course here, we just put here, right? So you have CO, CC, D, and uh, Q op. Yeah, again, uh, realistically, you should use 73 as round up. Huh? But we will use 0 0.5, 72.5 for our calculation here. Because this is all these are forecasting value, right? Forecasting value and uh, it come with a cost, uh, quite if quite uh, quite expensive also. So that's why in our analytical analysis we use 0 0.5 for our analysis. In realistic, don't tell your boss is 72.5. Tell your boss full number. Uh. Okay, order size for discount, we start calculating. You need to purchase 72.5 TV or 73 TV. Where does the range will fall? It will fall under this range, right? 73 TV is fall under discount rate. You can enjoy the discount rate of this one. Either you purchase this one at 1,400 without enjoying the discount rate, or I think your boss is smart enough if your boss see this discount rate, you're going to ask you to order using $1,100 per unit and join this price, right? Okay. So you calculate the total cost using the one that you learned. Total cost minimum under discount rate, carrying cost plus, sorry, order cost plus carrying cost plus the discount rate purchase plus PD. So CO you have, D you have, Q op you calculated, CC you have, Q op you have, divided by 2, P, P is here. Okay, D is here. Okay. Yeah. The P value here, you are using the discount rate component. Huh? Don't go and pick the wrong one. Huh? So P is the one that you're enjoying discount. So you are calculating at 72.5 TV. It falls under second discount, uh, first discount rate. Okay, so you're using P1010 over here. Substitution, huh? You do substitution, you get 233.784. This number, you are using 72.5 TV. Of course, if you use uh, 73 TV, it will increase a little bit only. La. It will not be a lot. Okay, but you around this number. Maybe it will be uh, three, two, three, four something. Okay, once you apply this minimum total cost, you will get this number. Just need to be careful to use the correct discount price for the P. Demand is the same. Demand is 200 TV per year. Demand the same, but you use the range of this one. Huh? 
Once you calculate the minimum cost, okay, this one just is for the 72.5, huh? oh, this one. So you compare with um, what happened if you buy, this one is 75.2 orders, okay? You check another price. What happened if you buy more than 90? Will you save more? Okay. This total cost is this total cost are uh, 230,000 is for 72.5 order. You need to give a solution to your boss. Will, will you save more money if you pay the same price? If you purchase more, uh, if you purchase more, will you save more money for your company? Let's do the analysis. Huh? You already done the basic calculation for 72.5 TV. Now you want to check what if you purchase more than 90, will it save or will it help the company to save money? You do. Huh? If you more than a, um, order more than the larger. Huh? So we compare. Same equation, but now we compare with 90, All right? We will use uh, P price 1,000, okay? Here, we compare what happened if you buy 90. Just now we do calculation, this one, this side, just now we do for 72.5 order. We get total cost minimum is 230,000 something. This one we're enjoying discount rate at here. You run another scenario. What happened if you increase your order? You increase your order to 900. If you are buying quantity of 90. You just check the discount rate by simulating what happened if you buy 90. You just check the the next category of discount. You don't do more, but you just check the boundaries. All right? You just check the boundaries. Why? Because 90, what where is 90? According to the graph that we just studied just now. Is here. Just now you calculate is here. Right? You calculate here. Now you check what happened if you go to one more boundaries of here. You're going to find the minimum total cost that you can save. But one one drawback is that you need to purchase more. Okay. So you substitute the same equation with another jump of quantity. Your quantity is 72 something, but you cross check with 90, you substitute 90 for your QOP. Once you calculate using 90 with this here, remember to change your discount price. Huh? Just now you use 1010 for your P here. But once you check another scenario using new QOP, remember to use the new discount rate, which is 900 here. Annual usage still same, cost carrying still same, order cost still same. You press the calculator, the total minimum cost drop to $194,000. You compare how many money you can save. If you buy 72 chun chun, if you buy if you buy 73 or 72.5 order, you're going to spend this much of money. Okay, your wallet is going to fork out this money. What happens if you increase your order value, order quantity, you enjoy more discount, you only need to pay less than 200,000 for more value or for more quantity. You just need to increase how many? 73 
to 90 is about 13, not 13, 20, 20, 23, about 23, uh, 27, sorry. You need to purchase another additional of 27 TV. Your wallet going to save about 33,000. Do you see the difference? This one, if you purchase 73, this one, if you increase your purchase to 90, to enjoy more discount, you pay less. So if you are the if you are the management, which decision you're going to make? Are you going to purchase 73? Or you're going to purchase 90? Muti, are you there, Muti? Yes, doctor. So which one you 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 prefer? Which is 90. Uh, you're going to prefer order 90 rather than 70. Yes, doctor. Yeah. Okay, this is common sense, uh? Common sense. Unless you're super rich, uh, you doesn't care. Uh? Uh, you doesn't care. I need chun chun number, uh, then you go for this. But again, uh, commercial world, the cost is everything. And if you have this calculation, don't hide this discount from your boss. Uh? If not, your boss is going to scream at you. Hey, why you don't tell me this information? Okay. So the answer for this one, the answer for example four is that you should recommend your manager to purchase 90 instead of the one that you calculate from your basic calculation, basic model that give you 73 TV. This one you are using the basic model, uh, the basic model calculation to find the Q op. Because the cost you reduce more, you get more, you get more TV, lower cost, meaning you make more profit. Lah. Okay. Okay, let's go for a few more slides. Huh? Uh, a few more definition. Uh, doctor, sorry. Uh, yeah, just go ahead. The previous slide. Uh, mm. Okay, just a moment. Okay, okay, so we go for a little bit more. Uh, let's see. Here. Okay, a little bit more. So we go for a definition. Uh, we already done the discount calculation. Eh? Now we learn new more things. Um, this one you heard before is called reorder point. So you need to fill in this one in your tutorial. What is reorder point? It's a level of inventory that you need to top up. All right, for example, you set re reorder point at 50. Less than 50, the, the order need to do already. Eh? Need to do already. So for example, example two in your tutorial. Eh? Example two, your, for example two, eh? we use the example two as to determine the reorder point. So example two, you look at your example two, I forget tutorial question, which one already? But it's a long, long question one. Okay, you go to example two, you continue from there. Uh, open 311 day per year. If the annual demand D, capital D is 10,000 gallon, the lead time to receive the order is 10 days. Determine the reorder point for the pain. Meaning you don't want, you don't want a chalk up point for your production. You need to reverse back 10 days and what you determine the reorder point for the pain. Huh? So there's an equation for reorder point, R equal to D multiplied by L. What is D? D is a demand rate per order, uh, per daily, meaning how many it will consume, how many items it will consume per day, multiplied by the lead time. Lead time means Lead time means from the day you order, it's going to spend how how much time to deliver to you. For example, if you lead time is 10 days, you place from 1st January, you're going to receive it 10 days later. Okay, you take the demand, multiply by the lead time, you get your reorder point. It means you reverse back from the reorder point. 
uh, from the lead time. Huh? So you use this calculation. Uh, this one is example five exercise. So we are using the basic EOQ model to determine the re-entry point or reorder point. R multiplied by D, how to calculate your small D. You take your capital D, 10,000 divided by day. You calculate, this is uh, per annual, per year, this is per day, Right. In one year, you have one, one, three, one, one day. So you divide this one, you calculate per day. Your demand rate per day, take the capital D divided by the operational day, multiply by the lead time is 10 days. So reorder point is 321.45 gallon, meaning if your inventory less than Three two one, or maybe three two two plus minus one. You need to make sure order already sent out. If not, there will be a shortage in your inventory. This is the safety point where you set in the system or you tell your purchaser every time your gal your quantity in the inventory drop until one certain number, you have to reorder already. Less than this number, you're going to have shortage happen. This one based on basic EOQ model. Okay, very simple calculation. Huh? Yeah, so this is just a just a update lah. Huh? Just a extra information. Okay, we move next one. We already done with order point using. R equal to DL by using this simple example. Next, service level. Service level definition is probability that the inventory available during lead time will meet the demand. So this is service level means uh, you calculate the percentage whether can or not your, you can deliver the goods that your customer look for. Meaning, is there any, it means that service level means that you go to your storehouse. Huh? Every time you visit your storehouse, is there any stock or not? Uh, how many percentage there is a stock there? Every time you walk into the production floor or walk to your inventory. Yeah? Service level is probability. Probability is percentage. So if your service level is 90%, it means that 0.9 probability that demand will be made during the lead time. Means service level is in percentage or probability percentage is from zero to one. If one means 100%, 0.9 means 90%, it will meet, means 90%, the, they always have a stock there. So, if and there's a 10% or stock up. Stock up means not enough, not enough stock. No stock, right? you tell your customer no stock, there will be 10%. If your service level is 90%. So in the industry service level as high as you can, but you have to check whether your production can meet or not, you have enough space or not, uh, enough cap capital or not, and so on. Okay, this is a service level definition. Um, definition for stock out is you not you don't have enough stock to supply to your customer or shortage. Huh? Mean negative you have negative uh, scenario, right? S customer order already but no stock in the inventory. Then customer complaint come in. This is the one that we don't want to face in the industry. We don't want stock out because once stock out there's a possibility to have a sales loss that is not what we want there's a graph in your tutorial handouts this is this graph is called variable demand with a reorder point so if you look at the graph y-axis is inventory level with your q q is your maximum order 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 quantity or your order quantity and 
you can see that this is like a ladder, like uh, it don't have a straight line, but you have a ladder means it, it, it will hold a certain time, then drop, hold a certain note and then drop and so on. Um, important is that just now we already learned how to calculate the lead time, or not lead time, but the re-entry point or reorder point from the lead time. R equal to dr just now. Right, just now we use this information to calculate this point. So from here, you can see that this actually, when the when your inventory drop to zero, there is one shortage happen here. Among the cycle of order, there is one cycle that you're having a shortage here. Means negative. It go below negative. This is zero already. No more stock already. And the demand keep coming in. They go negative. Then you stock up. This is a one that we don't want to see. Yeah. So how to prevent this scenario? One strategy is use safety stock, meaning you save some stock in the inventory, secondary inventory, you pull stock from secondary inventory to serve as a safety stocks. Meaning, you see this line? You, you shift your curve, huh? you shift your curve up a little bit by having, always have a safety stocks available. Meaning, this is the original zero, but you tell your you tell your your staff pull pull ten unit keep as a safety stocks always. So in your store, uh, in normal case don't use it. Then in your stock you always have a available a quantity of safety stock over here. Then when there is a negative, go to the secondary inventory pull out the safety stocks to meet the shortage negative value here. Then there's no more customer complaint here. This is the pro the, the strategy to save your customer or to save your customer complaint. A smart manager always has backup plan. This is backup plan, safety stocks. Meaning you always keep a low number of inventory just for the sake of negative scenario. But you don't keep a lot. You just keep a little bit. Right? Just keep a little. This one by experience. Huh? How many to keep this one by experience one? The better you are, the less unit you need to store. Okay, this one based on experience one. Huh? So these two graphs tell you the difference between uh, one is with safety stock, what is without safety stock. Huh? Here, you're going to receive customer complaint. Here, still okay, because you have a safety stock, but after safety stock, you after you go, after you spend the safety stock, remember to stock up your safety stock. Huh? Okay, Just tell you that you have a level of safety here. Huh? Okay, I think we stop here on this uh, safety stock uh, graph. Next lecture, we're going to look at reorder point with variable demand. Huh? Okay, stop here. I end the recording.